A couple weeks ago, it was announced that Apple was buying up Shazam, the music recognition app, for around $400 million. Although this is way down on Shazam's valuation from 2015, when a private funding round made it worth over a billion, it's still a big spend for Apple. Most of what they bought at this level in the past has been vital tech for the iPhone itself, like Authentech, which ran the Touch ID or Prime Sense, which powers face tracking and matching. That's not including Beats, which they bought for $3 billion in 2014. Shazam was already well integrated with a lot of their services, so what's going on here? Today we're going to look at how Apple have tackled the music industry so far and work out how they're planning to use Shazam. Apple may have got the ball rolling with digital music when they bought Sound Jam MP in 2000 and changed it into iTunes. The iPod followed a year later, but as the digital revolution continued, it was streaming services that took over rather than online music shops. So when Apple bought Beats in 2014 and turned that into Apple Music, it already had Spotify, Pandora, Tidal, and Rhapsody to compete with. Spotify's the big player here. In 2017, its revenues were up $1 billion from 2016, but it also doubled its losses, which were $518 million. Right now, Apple Music has about half the subscribers that Spotify does, $30 million to their $60 million, and streaming dominates the US music business, now accounting for over 60% of its revenue. And the payments to record labels and other licensors are the streamer's biggest costs. About 85% of Spotify's revenue goes towards this. Spotify claims that they'll become profitable at a certain scale, but it's not clear exactly how big they'd need to be. There's been a lot of talk about them potentially going public to raise money for a big expansion, but it's not happening anytime soon. Both Apple Music and Spotify are a pretty similar service. The price is about the same, the libraries are similar quality too, so how is Apple going to overtake them and how are either planning to make money? If you had to pick one thing that Spotify beats Apple on, it's new music. The Discovery Weekly tool in Spotify has been a huge hit. Shazam has 120 million active users and the app's purpose is to help you find music that you like but don't recognize. Right now, the app gets paid to direct users to a streaming service, like Spotify. So, all that traffic will now be pointed one way, to Apple. But also, Shazam comes with an enormous amount of data about what music its users are discovering. If Apple want to create a discovery service of their own, there must be some serious insight within all this data. And finally, there's the wider picture. Spotify is a music service, but Apple is an enormous tech company. Apple Music's already started making its own video content. The show Planet of the Apps might be a poor ripoff of Shark Tank, but it's still in its very early days and could find its voice. Apple Music have launched a number of exclusive albums, such as its big success with Drake's More Life. And if these streaming services become the record label, they cut out the middleman and those huge licensing costs plummet. It's a similar strategy to Netflix creating original content. Because to be clear, it's the record labels, not the artists who are making real money from streaming. Royalties to the musicians are still very low. It's likely that both Apple and Spotify will go down this route, but Apple have far more muscle here, especially because they're not limited to music alone. Think about how well Beyonce combined music and video for Lemonade. Apple could cover this whole process for an artist. It's also worth pointing out that Shazam isn't just for music. It also recognizes movies, TV, and advertising. This technology can be integrated into a wide range of services, not just music discovery. It will be a part of video discovery too. Let's not forget that the Apple HomePod launches early next year as a rival to the Amazon Echo and Google Home. Shazam has plenty of intellectual property that will be useful here, and it could also improve Siri. All of that potential comes in a company that's already profitable, so $400 million might prove to be a serious bargain. Want to learn more about business theory and history? Be sure to like and subscribe to be notified of our next segment.